Hi guys, welcome welcome back to my channel. It is me, The Telepato, and guys, today I am coming to you from Chicago, which is so crazy. I'm here for a couple of weeks for the Tech Women program, which is a program from the US Department of State, which aims to empower women in STEM and in leadership, and this is for women all around the world. There's about over 20 countries involved, and we're here to learn and grow, and I'm so excited to be here, and I'm sharing the entire journey on my vlog channel, so do be sure to check that out it is the Tsukhafato vlogs also on my other social media platforms it is the Tsukhafato on TikTok and Instagram so do follow along on the journey and today I thought I would answer some questions that I get a lot about being a software engineer so if you want to find out and hear the answers to those questions do stay tuned I really hope you enjoy it and find it helpful if you do please give it a thumbs up and subscribe we're on the road to 35k and if you still have any other questions drop them in the comment section and I will be sure to answer them so today i do have my phone here so that i can look at the questions so yeah let us actually get into it so uh, let's go to the first question drum roll <laughs> let me actually find the question Okay, how did you get into software engineering? So I've been documenting my entire journey on this channel. There's a playlist um, called Software Development, so do check it out. So my journey started, actually, let me just explain my entire career journey. So I started coding when I was about 14 years old. And how I got into it is I love to create content and before I started here on YouTube I used to have a blog and on the blog I write about fashion, beauty and just a whole lot of other random stuff and through that I started learning HTML and CSS because I wanted to change the colors and the design of my blog. I started getting like some paid partnerships that wanted me to like embed like the, like the ad in my blog so I needed to learn how to you know add that code into my blog and that's how I started learning how to code and I became interested I started learning um, website development. I'm like, oh, this is so cool. Like, all these random numbers and stuff actually, uh, or all these random letters and stuff actually produce us a website. Like, what else can I do? And I started getting into game development. I did a video on here where we went through the game that I made when I was like 16 years old. So, yeah, I've been in this. And so I was really interested. And when I went to grade 10, I decided to study computer science. No. In grade 10, I decided to take IT as a subject in high school and I started doing IT and we were programming in Delphi while I was in high school and absolutely loved it. We started with Scratch, which I was not a fan of, but now I do teach Scratch as, uh, with Easy Code, a company that I co-founded. But yeah, so we started with Delphi. I enjoyed my three years of IT in high school and I decided to go study computer science at the University of Pretoria. So in 2018, I started my computer science degree at the University of Pretoria. And yeah, that's when I was studying in my final year. That's when I started working. So I started freelancing as a web developer. And then um, I also had an IT internship in my final year as well. And right after working, I started working full time as a React Native developer. And how I got there was because our final year project in computer science, we built a game using React Native. And I had gotten that experience that helped me land my first job. I was there for about seven months. And then I got a new job as a software engineer and I've been there for the last, it's four years now as I post this, I'm currently celebrating four years at that job and I grew, I joined as someone with seven months experience and I am now a technical team lead and currently on the Tech Women program. So <laughs> that's my journey of becoming a software engineer. So the next question is, what does a day in your life as a tech lead look like? So uh, I still code and I enjoy that. I don't miss, I don't see myself stopping uh, coding anytime soon. So I still do code, but there's also now getting involved in a whole lot of, uh, a lot of other stuff, like for example, managing the team as well as giving technical input for different things, which I'm also really enjoying. I'm learning so much. So it's kind of like, let's say like, 
70-30 balance, so 70% of my time is spent coding, maybe even less, <laughs> maybe a little bit less, but let's say 70% of my time is coding, and then about 30% is involved in all these other meetings where we're discussing, yeah, so it's either like technical input, uh, discussing the team, helping out the team members. So actually, I think it's more of like a 60-40, and yeah, I, I don't want to go any lower than that right now because I still really enjoy coding and I feel like I still have so much to learn so I'm not ready to stop coding yet and uh, let's see what's uh, which programming languages are best to learn in 2025 so this one is a difficult one to answer and I think it's more of like what job are you trying to get into and what are you trying to accomplish? What are your goals, you know? So I've been uh, doing React Native for the past, um, the past four years, four, five years, like ever since my final year project, I've just been doing React Native and front end uh, and I've been doing a little bit of back end work in Golang and that's like what I need to know at the moment. And yeah, so I think it's like, what are you trying to accomplish? Like right now I am busy Guys, you'll be ex actually excited to hear this. <laughs> so I'm currently busy uh, building a um, a widget, a, st a step tracker widget for um, like on iOS, and I need to figure out how to do like Swift and all of that. So because that's what I'm trying to accomplish, I want to make a widget. So I need to learn that. So it's like, what are you trying to accomplish? What job are you trying to get? That's how I always see it. Like you could also check what's kind of, uh, if you're looking to get into the job market, just see what's popular. And yeah, I think also like what you're interested in. And uh, do I need a computer science degree to become a software engineer? Um, no, I think it depends on the company you're applying for. There are some companies where you, you need to have that degree. Like they just want you to have a degree and that's, that's just how it works. But I do know a lot of people get into the industry by being self-taught, by going to a boot camp. There's lots of different ways. There's like companies like Malsoft where you do the boot camp and they, I think you get like a six month internship and you have like job experience. So there's lots of different ways. Um, so yeah, I think you can. There's also like Rethink Code, which is like a two year program, something like that. So there's lots of different ways to get into the industry, but yeah, it also just depends on the different companies are, uh, all the different companies and what their requirements are. And how do you stay sharp and keep learning new tech skills? So for me, uh, I've been enjoying Substack a lot recently. I like to read uh, the newsletters, articles that people post on there. Um, I always enjoy Brilliant, which is actually the sponsor of today's video. So they have a whole lot of like hands-on learning. So you get to learn while you do like the practical, um, when you do the course, it's like practical, it's hands-on. They have different courses. So they have like uh, math, science, programming. They actually have a new course, which is called Programming and Functions, which is the one I'm currently checking out. And I'm really enjoying it. Like, I feel like I just like to, you know, build that habit and I think just knowing how to learn and knowing how to solve problems like that will never go out of style in this career because like we're always solving like different careers and we're always solving different problems as software engineers so I just like to keep my problem solving skills sharp and I like to have like to build that habit to do something like every day a little challenge every day to know that okay I can still I can still solve problems especially now since we have tools that can like help us out I like to make sure that my mind is sharp so if you guys want to try out brilliant with me you can use the link it is brilliant.org slash sofa so it's also in the description and it will let you try brilliant art for free and you can also get 20% off the annual subscription so don't miss out the link is down below so yeah that is the question another thing I really like listening to podcasts because I can listen to podcasts while I'm cleaning while I'm driving but I'm just chilling watching YouTube videos I'm actually building up like maybe I should make it public actually I uh, I'm creating like a playlist on YouTube where whenever I find an interesting video, I just save it and when I have time, I go and watch it. So that's what I'm doing. I want to get more into like reading actual like programming books, which I haven't been doing or like not like programming books, but like uh, books about tech, about you know, like all the different things. So if you have any books to recommend, drop them in the comment section actually. But yeah, that's that's how I keep my skills sharp and also now working on projects on the side, which has always been a dream of mine and it's finally happening. 
Um, let's see, what's the hardest coding problem you faced and how did you solve it? That's a, that's a little bit of a difficult one because I feel like I solve like <laughs> difficult problems every day. Sometimes it's a simple problem and you get stuck on it. So I think like just not giving up and also asking for help, guys. Like don't be shy, you know, like you don't know everything and you don't need to know everything. And especially when you're at work, you have people that are around to help you and support you. So I think if you're facing something, yes, spend some time trying to figure out, trying to solve the problem, but people are there to help. So don't be scared to ask for help. And I guess now we have like the AI tools. So that also helps a lot. Um, but yeah, that's how I solve my coding problems. And how do you avoid burnout as a developer? So I think just um, having a life outside of work, I think that's what helps me out a lot. Like I do a lot of things outside of work that I don't feel like work is my whole life. Like I do my YouTube, I do my other like short form content on other platforms. I run, I'm getting into gym now. I, oh guys, like I dance, I, I do a whole lot of other things. So I think it's just like keep that spark alive. Even like, for example, a, a typical work week, like right after work on Tuesdays, I go for a run. And then on Wednesday, I go to hoop. And it's like, I have, like, I know that, okay, at a certain point, work ends. And then I, there's something that I do. So like, yes, we love to learn. We love to work on our projects, but make sure to have time for other things, especially like going outside, taking a walk. Like we need that, we need the fresh air. And uh, what's your number one tip for someone who wants to land their first tech job? Um, I'd say like just do things. I think that's what helped me out a lot when I started. Um, I had my portfolio on GitHub where our projects were there. I had like I had built a personal portfolio, which is something I want to do again right now, like just to showcase like everything that I'm doing right now. So I had a personal portfolio. Um, just talking to people, networking, like. Um, yeah, my first job actually got through um, Twitter. Like they saw my personal profile on my Twitter. So like just network, put yourself out there. Yes, it, it's very scary. You might be shy, but hey, like, you know, if you want to grow and you want to get that job, you need to, you just need to put yourself out there. So yeah, just put yourself out there and just work on things. Like just learn, Make don't be afraid to make mistakes. Just always learn new things. And uh, the software engineers really need to know math. Um, I haven't used math like directly in the work that I do, but I think it's like that thing of like building those problem solving skills, you know, like you need to know how to apply, like programming is a lot of problem solving. So math is like training your brain to do that. And I think a lot of um, other developers in their jobs get to actually like use the math depending on what they're doing but like you're solving some really challenging problems and that's what math is like you're challenging you're solving challenging problems so yeah i think you just need to get used to that the challenges and math can be fun too i like math and uh, what's the most rewarding part of being a software engineer i love solving problems um i like being able to solve difficult problems it's very rewarding and I really enjoy being able to create stuff that gets used by like millions of people and it's like wow I did that <laughs> you know uh yeah I think just like solving those difficult problems and yeah I think just being able to create something like tangible and like you know you get stuck on that line of code and it's fighting you back and you're like ah let me solve the problem and then you see the solution like make an actual difference you know like, yeah, I think I really enjoy that. And being able to create like stuff like from scratch. But yeah, those are the questions I have from today. If you have any other questions, be sure to drop them in the comment section and I will answer them. And that is the end of today's video. Don't forget to check out Brilliant. The link is up on the screen right now and I'll also put it in the description so you can try Brilliant out for free and it will also give you 20% off the premium subscription. So don't miss out, guys. It's such a great platform. There's so much to learn, so don't miss out. And if you have any other questions, be sure to drop them in the comment section and I will answer. But otherwise, that is it for today. Be sure to also check out my vlog channel for my Chicago adventures and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye. Bye.